Good morning, girls, or good afternoon, or wherever you are in this world at this time. Uh, welcome to this week's Wisdom Offering. We've got an amazing lady joining us this morning, Denise Renson. She's one of Hawaii's most innovative naturopathic um, physicians, and she specialises in um, anti-aging uh, anti and um, regenerative personalised medicine. Um, such an honour to have her on. Um, I very much value your time being on, so thank you very much for, be for being with us, Denise, this, this morning. Um, so the call this morning is really about bliss, ecstasy, and, and the erotic soul of a woman and how these and how and why these um, these states of being are such powerful healing and, and, and manifesting frequencies. And I just wanted really um, Denise to jump on and just tell her a little about a bit, bit about her story first, um, just so you can un, kind of um, understand where she's come from and why she's kind of moved into these these realms that she has. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Hey. Hi, Alice. Thank you so much for having me. I was so honored to be invited um, to this beautiful group to talk about just the, the work that I'm creating in the world for us women. I'm being guided to do this. It's totally channeled. It has, uh, you know, it has a touch of my intellect kind of baked in from here and there, a couple sides. But it's overall, I have finally surrendered to the call of this beautiful entity called Bliss. And my work in the world is to design women's lives for bliss. And that I'm so honored I've been touched by this beauty. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. You know, I've been a uh, an integrative um, functional naturopathic doctor. Uh, my focus, I have a fellowship in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. And I was always really drawn to um, uh, innovative sides of, of natural medicine and integrative medicine. And so I was always kind of at the cutting edge of things. And I ran a practice in Hawaii. I am on a pause right now because I am actually taking Bliss Design globally for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, in the midst, I worked mainly with women. I just I just drew women into my practice. It was boutique medicine. It was um, it was a premium package kind of model where um, the you know the women would buy a package and get IVs and acupuncture and functional medicine visit and we would have an hour together. So during that hour the woman have would have would be dripping the IV. So she'd be getting these nutrients straight into her um, bloodstream and it's straight into the cells. So they were super bioavailable. And then at the same time I would plug in the acupuncture needles into areas that I feel really needed alignment and we dive into their uh, physiology but we always always ended up talking about the metaphysics of the woman I mean that was a truly the most healing part of all of these beautiful bliss designed visits it was it wasn't really the nutrients or maybe the needles opened up a few gates here and there mm -hmm. but really when we dove into the soul and especially when we dove into the erotic soul of the woman, the sexuality, the freedom, the sovereignty, the creative, mm. that's where so much healing happened that over the years, more and more, I was really starting to ask myself the question, am I doing the right kind of medicine here? Mm. Um, because to run a procedural practice, with IVs and acupunctures and injections and you know it's a big operation and it's it's kind of uh, um, it takes a lot of administrative power and a lot of cognitive power it took a lot out of me and um, I, I, I there was one point I came to a moment where I just started to ask for answers because I didn't have them I felt like you know prescribing hormones, giving IVs, wasn't robust work enough. I felt like I was in a tight container. It was really important work, but I felt that my work is meant to be much bigger, much larger. I felt really constrained in the office. I felt I didn't want to be between four walls. I was living in Hawaii and most of the day I was in an office. It was just, yeah. uh, so I came to a point, I walked one night, all night in the middle of a uh, beautiful um, coastline um, uh, park. I mean, it was just beaches and beaches. I just walked and looked at the uh, skies and really asked for answers. And from these, from these uh, moments of really kind of surrendering and beginning to ask, you know, that's the key. We, the moment we begin to ask, mm, okay. all, 
the channels start to open. Yeah. And so bliss design downloaded from these kind of moments. Wow. And it was very beautiful. It was touched. It was very gentle. I mean, very, um, uh, sweet, very sweet the way she touched me. And, and from there on, I could no longer do things the same way. And little by little, I began designing bliss designed. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. It's interesting that you, you know, what you touched on there that, um, it doesn't matter what really you do physically, it really does depend on, depend on your state of being and state of self-love and the state of allowing to let this stuff in where, where it shifts. Like I know in my, in my life I've had, I mean, I've always been so super conscious about my, what, I'm, what I'm eating and how my physical activity and things like that, like so onto it. But that, that can stay, stay the same. But if my fluctuation, my emotion, my, 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 my medical, medical, physical being... Um, where my head's at, you know, I might, um, my body can just be completely closed and completely unavailable to shifting or changing or, you know, can be in the right state. And it's all dependent yeah. on where my, where my head's at, where my, you know, where I, how I am relating to my greater environment. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I consider our physical vessels um, as ensouled. We are ensouled basically in this body. Our soul is in en sold. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so, <laughs> so mm -hmm. our frequency absolutely designs this entire physicality, and it's and physicality designs the frequency back. So it's a beautiful feedback loop. For sure. And, yeah. So I consider bliss. I consider ecstasis. I consider the erotic soul an epigenetic environment. <laughs> it's For kind sure. of, it's kind of like the house you live in, right? Uh, it designs you, the environment uh, designs you. So absolutely the frequency is number one medicine. And I'd love to read you a poem um, that I wrote about what I feel healing is because today I want to touch on two areas of uh, this discussion. We talked about why are these frequencies so healing and why are they so manifesting? I mean, sure. positively manifesting because everything is manifesting, yeah, yeah, but yeah. are we manifesting the, 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 the world that we truly yearn for? Sure. So, <laughs> that's this is lovely i love a poem and, and perhaps you could write it up or yeah, write it up i'm just wondering i'm wondering if i could um share this screen yeah let me just share my little screen oh, here perfect. okay here it is okay can you see it yes okay so this is a poem that came to me a couple months ago someone asked me about what is transformational healing and this is kind of what what transpired at the end of the day there is only one true healer freedom the heart organ beating deep in your soul cavity circulating day in day out your only nutrient love mm. so um in this poem <laughs> I, I really <laughs> it's you know uh it's a part of the whole being on this journey is it has been about starting to really write more and you know extract the essence of this whole experience and poetry is my um my uh my area photography and poetry are my kind of art forms mm. um so you can find uh, i have a poetry page called Renson on Facebook. It's just fun. It's where I deposit all of this so I don't dump yeah. it on everyone everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. It's my little, you know, my repository of what comes up. Yeah. Um, but essentially, uh, you know, when I began to appear on the, um, on the online space and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, I mean, I don't work with Twitter that much right now, but you know, Facebook and Instagram are usually where I really started to meet the goddesses. Yeah, my sisters, um, my tribes, my people, my girls. And um, I, um, I started to really hear about the movement of sovereignty and really um, the really healing power of that freedom that we are starting to claim back into our bodies, into our lives. We are designing our lives um, actively as women in the world. So freedom is truly the true healer. Without that freedom, you can't truly be healthy fully. 
So the movement of sovereignty for women that we're seeing uh, more and more and more is really like metaphysical sovereignty, not just, you know, I can have any job I want. Really, I can design this reality the way I, you know, I long to live it. And, uh, and that's, that's really the true healer. The moment you touch on that, then you start circulating that true depth of love that's the truly healing nutrient yeah yeah absolutely and really i suppose uh, deep down our souls knows that you know that our souls edging us and pushing us towards uh, having that kind of epiphany in our lifetime and so if we i think there's it's always that soul yearning for us to know that we can create whatever we want to create we can be in that state but it's all of these things that are layering on top of us that's stopping us, you know, that's preventing us from getting there. So I think once we break through and realize that, it's like, oh my God, what's available here? It's, you know, yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, the whole process of uh, unveiling all the shadows starts because yeah. that's what, I mean, essentially, we are perfect. Yeah. We are infinite. We are you know, perfection is just, we have so many veils, um, so many, you know, I call it cordage because I, you know, I, um, yeah, I <laughs> we it. are, yeah, we're bomb, you know, we, we're bondage artists yeah. essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I wrote, I wrote some poetry around that whole topic of, of, of how, you know, humanities just love their bondage. And so, so really kind of becoming, getting a sense of humor around it so that it's light and you start to kind of untie the, you know, the core. That's right. That's right. I always see it as, you know, it's, it really is a game, isn't it? And once you understand the game, all you just have to just learn how to start. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then it's like, yeah. oh my God, you're living in this incredible game where you get to, to ride it. Yeah, it's, it's a real honor. And this is where we're kind of going to step into our conversation into bliss and ecstasis. Um, is that good? I'm going to stop sharing, but that's my little poem about that's healing. Perfect. So when yeah. you're thinking about healing, uh, it's going to be, are, are we okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. can, um, um, yeah, perfect. Here we go. Connection. Oh, it's a bit. My love, can you tell us? Can you? Connection is not good. As a, a Wi Fi. Uh, no Netflix, I think. Sorry. <laughs> uh, usually, um, uh, I do calls not this late in the evening when everyone's online. <laughs> so I totally it's get it. For the best. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. It's good. To, it's it's good to get a little break, isn't it? Okay. So, <laughs> so today's talk is about why bliss, ecstasis, and the erotic soul are such healing. Um, and manifesting frequencies and healing we touched on because essentially um, the flow state, the bliss state, the ecstatic state, um, the erotic state are essentially really healthy epigenetic environments for our body and really they heal the vessel so that a lot more light can enter and the soul can be a lot more in touch with with source yeah? yeah yeah so that's kind of like that's medicine that's frequency medicine 101 yes, it. <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> and if, if if your doctor is not prescribing this then get them to call me okay <laughs> <laughs> <Jason> <laughs> <on the doctor. laughs> well you know this is the future of medicine and uh, i don't know if you girls talk much about human design in the earthist community um, oh, I think it's come up, it's come up in a yeah. conversation, but definitely, you know, like there's so many, <laughs> so many yeah. things I've touched on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good. No, human design is something that I work with and Gene Keys as well. And um, basically, uh, once you know yourself really well, then you can create with so much more clarity and so much more power. And um, that's what's helped me to realize that a lot of my work is... In medicine, it was always about 
you know, five to 10 years ahead. And that's actually my human design. That's actually in the sleeping Phoenix design that actually my work is 10 years ahead. Everything we're going to talk about tonight is going to be totally normal dialogue within five to 10 years in the world in medicine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. But that's, that's what we're creating here because we're, we are ascending actively here as this, you know, this group of women um, that, uh, that are in the earthist community and in the bliss designed community. I think, you know, it's just draws Absolutely. this kind of Absolutely. innovative future thumb. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Great. So the flow state, you know, the, uh, the flow state is essentially um, a specific type of frequency, a specific type of um, level of consciousness where uh, the brain, the, the inner critic goes offline and you're able to drop into uh, frequencies of selflessness where you lose a sense of self, timelessness, where you lose a sense of timing, um, sense of um, effortlessness and richness. This is what the flow genome world is talking about when they talk about the flow state. It's alternate altered state of consciousness that is highly innovative and high performance based. So when you are um, heli skiing, when you are surfing, when you're free diving, when you're painting, when you're writing, you drop into the state that is, takes your ego offline, takes your inner critic offline and you drop into deep now and you're creating. Mm. So, yeah. Does that, does that? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. We've just been, yeah, absolutely. And I think that whole, you know, it's almost like a trance like state, We're absolutely a meditative state, isn't it? And we're like, I am um, very much drawn to like, as you are with your poem, poetry and your photography, you're very much drawn to anything crafty at the moment because it really gets you to work with your hands and work very, you know, you're in this trance like state when you're creating and it's like you've got your blinkers on so then source can just start jamming through. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our, our conscious mind, um, the intellect is, you know, is a very limited amount of data that you can actually really uh, take in only about four pieces of information at the same time. So I can take in you talking, I can take in seeing your background, I can take in the sound of the trees outside and not much more but the subconscious mind that goes online in the flow state is limitless of how much information mm. and that i can take in to feed your creative uh, ideas mm. so so i began working with the flow state um kind of backwards from bliss into flow because i wanted to understand bliss much more mm. um and um, I started looking at the research in the flow uh, state, um, the research out of the Hungarian researcher, out of Benson, out of the flow genome project, the whole works I kind of accumulated and I wanted to see, okay, how is that going to inform my work around bliss, ecstasis, and now an extension, it took the, its extension into the erotic soul of the woman. Oh, so, awesome. so it's basically... I, I talk about uh, bliss being the feminine flavor of the flow state and ecstasis being the masculine flavor of the flow state. Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah. the flow state, as we remember, it's when you drop into that trance, as you call it, and you're kind of drop off, the ego drops off, and you go into the deep now, and you are, you don't know, like you lose a sense of self you lose a sense of time uh you go into super rich like whoa and there is an effortlessness to it and in bliss i will add blessedness you know the word bliss comes from the root blessed it's mm. uh, in french it's a uh, beatitude beauty attitude yeah so there is this oh, how good is that it's so gorgeous <laughs> yes it really is i'm writing that down <laughs> Oh, I can give you the notes. Don't worry. I mean, listen, we're going to talk about this for the next. Whatever, I know you just you're speaking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so beatitude is that feminine frequency of the receptive, the blessedness, the gratitude of being in that flow state. So when you are in your craft or when you are taking that photograph, there is this 
there is this kind of you breathe in that grace there is a blessedness to it and that's ultimately how that frequency of bliss actually feels mm -hmm. and the ecstasis is the masculine side of it is when you have that flow state and it's this again selflessness timelessness richness and effortlessness and you add in awe and wonder that masculine penetration so when you see that surfer like plowing through the tunnel and there's this like there's this this movement outward there's this excitement there is this mm. masculine penetration of the world with your with your flow yeah so <laughs> so and, and we have both right and we can play with both sometimes you drop into uh, blessedness and gratitude another time you drop into awe and wonder like wow this is so amazing right so mm -hmm. and we like yin and yang we travel between these yeah mm -hmm. it's kind of this constant flow yeah of the flow state um, and you really can't have one without the other can you yeah, they just really if they're in balance then it's very much like you know it's not going to be that synergistic experience is it Oh. absolutely you can't just receive 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 you need to give give you know it's it's this flow of energy so so that's what i really talk about in my work and starting to experientially know when you're in these states and 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 what actually happens in these states physiologically is astounding mm. and it's it's incredible you know the the frontal cortex goes offline and you drop into areas of your brain that are hyper innovative hyper creative you start to produce dopamine uh, norepinephrine uh, uh, the uh, um the, the serotonin the anandamide the bliss molecules i mean it's amazing the cocktail of pleasure molecules and high performance molecules they just flood your system the nitric oxide just floods that cortisol out of your system so it's super super healing for hyper stressed hyper inflammatory yeah. body yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just incredible and lateral thinking wakes up and you know creative and innovative ideas i mean the research shows that your creativity goes up you know by 400 percent in these states mm. and it's super healing and it's really balancing to the hormones so um it's, mm. it's actually they're really powerful healing frequencies and they're also extremely uh, power for for manifesting and really why is that right mm. yeah oh my gosh it's so it would be so interesting to be in a position that you are as a doctor and knowing you know the inter or the science and everything behind all everything that's happening because you can have this knowingness and you have this exper experiential understanding of it but when you really listen to your words of, of what what's happening it's incredible yeah. isn't it it's so it's so fun and it you know and it gives you this confidence that oh my goodness not only does it have a real powerful mythological and mystical angle to it mm, which course, is yeah. really i mean that's a lot i'm talking a lot about that kind of work uh, yeah. i take everything from from the power of um isis ishtar gaia you know shakti uh, yeah. aphrodite like all of those incredible inner archetype goddesses they can inform those flow states really powerfully and then of course then we have the psychological realm to it um the actual what actually happens psychologically like the selflessness and timelessness and you can start to recognize and you go whoa i just dropped into flow and then you start to realize how you can actually design flow bliss ecstasis into your daily routine mm. so that you drop into these hyper uh, high performance mm inner glow beauty yeah. frequencies <laughs> yeah and that's a big one isn't it i think that the, the biggest part of this or one of these is being aware what state you're in and you know and knowing when you're in that state and knowing that that's what that is when you're in there and just being yeah, so, yeah. yeah. and and that you design your uh creative work around dropping into flow and there's four stages to the flow state so once you know then you kind of start to realize where you're at which stage you're in and let's say um your best time to do your creative work is between 10 and 11 30 in the morning so from nine o'clock you'll start dropping into flow mm -hmm. state so that by the time you're in the zone and you shut off from the world that's when you're in that creative mode and 
and the lateral thinking will start to really help you connect ideas, see patterns, connect idea from, you know, dimension A and dimension Z and what you can create is pretty incredible in these type of states. <laughs> and you know, this should be, this is actually, if your body is really healthy, if your frequency is really um, aligned, uh, then you are able to live in these states much more readily. And you can just drop in, come out, drop in, come out, and just be uh, more and more of this future human kind of design. Yeah, for sure. And I want this for women because not only is it incredibly healthy, like that's the medicine, right? Uh, but it's also a really beautiful experience and it's also super, super um, innovative and magnetic because your, your face glows when nitric oxide is flooding through your system. Mm. Uh, you are filled with like ecstatic, you know, co cocktails of, uh, of of neurochemicals i mean you look like you just had an orgasm after a really quality mm -hmm. flow state and so it's really beautiful and people are drawn to you and it's very really magnetic so yeah absolutely you know and that's where picking up those images from people all the time aren't we we really are you know you see someone who's in the kitchen cooking up and cooking up there you know doing their thing in the kitchen and they're just pumping on fire you're drawn to that and you're like oh my god the food that they're creating is like next level and you know, in, yeah. with artists just doing their thing, you know, like it's really, if you think about it, if we actually go out to observe it and um, take in what's actually going on there, it's really easy to identify when someone's in a flow state and when they aren't, isn't it? Yeah, when they are, you know, their ego has dropped off, they become mm. really beautiful. Right? I mean, that's because we start to get closer and closer and closer to source energy and you know i always talk about magnetism being about two aspects about uh, meaning manifestation being about two aspects magnetism the attractive force the arousing force you know something you're arousing something to come towards your you you know that's kind of <laughs> that's the erotic soul speaking right yeah 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 and, yeah. <laughs> and of course also why manifesting uh, we are um, human beings are really um, uh, yearning for revelation. We want to know truth of our life, uh, meaning, significance. Uh, so really quality manifesting powers are really re revelatory. Um, revelation is so key for humanity. Um, so when you're, you know, going through the process of unveiling your shadows, your, your subconscious programming, you're revealing more and more of truth. You're revealing more and more of the light that you are and more and more of, of the infinity that you are. And that's, if you can give that to a human being, if you can be magnetic, if you can be so pure and so much in that high level flow state as a human being, then you, you know, you're drawn to these people. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. They're glowing. Um, their ego has dropped off. So there's not a lot of chips on their shoulders. They don't have a lot of agenda towards you. They're just clear. Yeah. And that's what these states do to the woman's presence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So do you, I mean, I don't know, you've probably got a lot more that, you know, to, to talk about on that, but I just, if I could just interject for a minute and just ask you a question then. How do you, uh, how could you propose to women that you can find or tap into that? If you just, if it, for women out there who just don't know where to start or just a little bit kind of lost as to, you know, what's going to get them into that, can you perhaps shed some light in that? Absolutely. And this is what I, what I'm doing with women all the time. So this is a piece of cake. Oh, can my daughter say hi? Sure. Come, sweetheart. Come say hi. This is Suey, everybody. Suey, so gorgeous. She's my little bliss. <laughs> <laughs> she's and I, ten. I, yummy. Yeah, so good. And I have to just add there too. I think I really started to fully drop into this flow state and be fully, um, much more easily connected to source. And it was through my children that that happened for me. And I'm not saying, you know, like there's obviously women out there who don't want, it's not their path to have children all about that. But for me personally, that was a massive eye opener or channel opener for, my, for myself, my own experience. 
Mm. I think mm. what children do uh, for for um, the woman's life and probably even um, any kind of uh, uh, service to self polarization, uh, service to others polarization. Yeah. Mm. So in the law of one, uh, you know how they really instruct mm. us to really pull all of our energies towards positive polarization service to others versus sure. entities that are service to self are suffering a lot more yeah. so even just that shift of, of like focus on the well-being of the other and his holiness the dalai lama says this you know the worst thing the hardest thing for the human is to like take care of themselves like it's so much more mm. uh, nourishing to serve others no that's <laughs> that's such a that's amazing yeah that's very revelation that you just said that too because it's exactly what happened you know I was, I was you know in the sense of just like just looking after me and I was like is this it you know and then when you are it's, it becomes that you have to be in complete selflessness so whether it's your child or whether it's something in the community or something that you can really mm -hmm. give, give and give and then that's ah yeah it's beautiful yeah. and it's it, it happens it, it happens to i believe uh, anyone who really drops into their soul purpose work mm. as well yeah know? um yeah that's kind oh, of I'm, really beautiful. I'm so glad you said that too because there's a there are a lot of women in this group who have who aren't ready to have children and are looking for their soul purpose or who have chosen not to have women uh, have children or you know and so this is just so so perfectly uh, perfect that you just explained it in that way because it's it's just so true isn't it amazing it's yeah and it's very beautiful and you know plato talked about that is is the um well when we get into the topic of er erotic soul how that really plays in he talked about you know the erotic energy is not just your attraction and arousal towards uh, your beloved it actually is your recognition of the beauty in another and of the beauty mm. in the beauty itself and it's this very mm. cosmic pull that we have to to uh to um I'm just trying to get back to what we just talked about with uh, women creating the soul source purpose. Yes, when you get on that, on that, on that frequency of look, uh, finding your soul source work, you are actually um, having beginning to have this erotic experience, intimate experience with life and source itself. It's not about another beloved. Yeah, uh, the beloved becomes your life in your work and that's yeah. why that that magnetism starts to really play when you start to play with that energy of your erotic soul and that becomes extremely magnetic that's when you start to like that's a whole other ball game yeah yes yes <laughs> all the nice yes! to drop off. <laughs> it's so fun right oh so, so good. let's get back to your question you know what do we do i mean okay so let's really begin okay so what is bliss bliss on one level bliss is the state you drop in when you realize your inherent metaphysical freedom that's sovereignty peace you, when it drops into your body i mean you i remember the moment when it finally hit me that I am actually sovereign. I am actually here. I'm no longer in the masters and slave matrix. When you uh, drop out of those timelines, boom, girls, that's it. That's the only thing to get. That there is no master. That's the matrix. That master and slave, like that victim and freedom. You know. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's our work. This is who we are as incarnation of humanity. We are basically here to take the path from victimhood to freedom mm. out of the mastery and master and slave matrix into the sovereignty and love mm. matrix. Mm. Cut off or matrix, time. it doesn't even have to be a matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> So once we you've done that, <laughs> so um, the easiest place to go is go back, you know, close your eyes, you know, go back into your data, go back into your memory and go back when you were a child and go back to the moments when you felt completely in the flow, in the zone, in the sweet spot, 
in bliss or in ecstasis. It doesn't matter with, if it's the feminine flavor of the flow state or in the masculine flavor of the flow state, but you were in flow. Your ego dropped off, all your fears were off, and you were completely in the sweet spot, in the sweet zone. So really start to identify moments in your childhood. What was around those moments? Were you with other people? Were you by yourself? Were you in nature? What are your flow triggers? What are your bliss triggers? And start to identify what they were in your childhood. Because there's a lot of data there. You've already, you're already a flow master. It's just you took yourself out of it because of fear, worry, and responsibilities and, and the master and slaver matrix. But, yeah. and go do the same in your adolescence. So close your eyes and really drop into the moments of your bliss and ecstasis in your adolescence because you were forming different connections then. Maybe there's a lot more social factor in there. Um, mm. And if, you know, if traumatic moments pop up, because, you know, anytime you're looking for something beautiful, something ugly <laughs> can pop up at the same time because yeah. they kind of come, you know, there's the mm. shadows, you know, piggyback yeah. on the beauty. And so when, if something really traumatic comes up, just really work with it, be with people that you love, get a lot of support and release them keep releasing because that's benign, you know, turn it, turn that data into benign data. You know, it'll just be, Oh yeah. But that takes work, you know? Um, but drop into the flow states, into the bliss states, into the ecstatic states in your, um, in your, um, adolescence and then and in now okay how do you when do you drop in when do you find yourself in the zone are you painting are you canoeing are you with your children are you able to drop you know that inner critic off and drop into that sense of oneness um selflessness timelessness mm -hmm. um, you know i i remember when i was training for triathlons in hawaii and i would always drop into this this flow state when mm -hmm. i was about 30 minutes into the deep oceans you know during my mm -hmm. training the, at that moment i i lost sense of time mm -hmm. I, you know, I lost completes and it was just like this gorgeous experience is like, you could potentially it, call it very orgasmic in some way, because you, you actually are really entering close to being close to source. Mm. And before, and, before you know it, the race is over, right? And you're like, <laughs> did I even swim that? I know, I know, I know. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Um, you know, is it during um, sports that you drop into the flow state? Mm. You know, the anandamide is the bliss molecule in your body, and it comes from the um, Sanskrit root ananda. And uh, this is a molecule that was discovered in the University of uh, Jerusalem uh, back in the 90s. And um, it's actually our main endocannabinoid. So CBD, why CBD is so incredible at calming and dropping you deep into meditation when you, or into flow state is because it stimulates your, um, your amount of anandamide you have in your body. Mm. So, so CBD also helps with the, the bliss state and the flow state. Yeah, oh wow. Um, you um there, just just quickly though you mentioned there um you know sometimes you might bring up the shadow and i just just for you know to kind of discuss on this a little bit because i think sometimes um you know we can be so deep within the matrix and so you know so deep within this constriction or this life of constriction that is around us or that we've found ourselves in that we've we've forgotten you know, and we've, we've, we've forgotten what deep inherently we already know lights us up, but to try and kind of even remember or to, to, to imagine back when, you know, when we were lit up and we, when we did feel those feelings of bliss is, can, be, can be challenging, especially if you are in a bit of a state of, you know, um, of what the fuck, what the fuck's going on, you know what I mean? Um, so I know you said to be support, um, surround yourself with supportive, um, other people who are very supportive and things like that. Um, is there anything else that you can kind of add there for someone who's just finding it challenging, um, to drop in? Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Well, 
just know that the 21st century normal is not bliss. It's not ecstasis. It's very much a what is the first stage of the flow state is the stage of suffering when we are in the um, beta brain waves. We are, you know, our bodies are filled with a lot of cortisol and stress hormones. We have to be alert and vigilant and switched mm. on and show up and, and do and do and do. Um, so the 21st century human normal is actually the first state of the flow, the first stage of the flow state, which is called the suffering state. <laughs> because. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and you know, that's a funny. It's true. Yeah. And it's, it's funny that we live this life and we think that we're living in, we think we're happy. But we clearly know we're not on, on that on that intrinsic level. We know we're not, but we we go around thinking that our day to day life is reasonably good. You know, it's crazy, and we show up mm. and we we take our responsibility seriously, and and um, it's all beautiful. It's all really benevolent. Like I think you know, ninety percent of humanity is like trying to just do their best for their families. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. But um, here's the thing: um, in the long run, it really creates a, a degenerative um, body, and it sets you on. You become addicted to self sabotage, mm -hmm. and you let shadows and low frequencies run your life, which you can absolutely live that life. I mean, there's nothing. You have full free will. That's the one thing that this design has given us is the free will to choose. So at some point, um, I always say, you know, necessity is the most powerful muse. <laughs> like it has to become a must to choose. Okay. I, I need something different. Um, so necessity, we got to look for necessity and we got to look for like something of why, right? Like, why do you want to learn how to drop into flow states or into uh, have a lot more bliss in the daytime or even just have a lot more peace of mind and ease and calm uh, why is that important to you it has to have some kind of reason and that's when you kind of bite in and start to work on it just like working out you know the body like if if i don't move for a couple of months it's damn hard for me to get going again yeah absolutely yeah. Because yeah. we, we drop into, we get kind of stuck in frequency loops, yeah? Mm. So uh, if you're stuck in a frequency loop, then that's when you need um, uh, some kind of an impetus, some kind of a catalyst, uh, some kind of a necessity needs to wake up in you. And I always say one of the most important things that we can cultivate in our lives as women is to become ignitable is to in aikido you know you're trained this where um you know i lived in japan for seven years and i trained in aikido and in shiatsu and reiki and acupuncture and all those but what one of the things that i learned really well is when you are in the zone in the flow state and the master tells you wake up you gotta be able to wake up you gotta you got to know how to become ignitable and change course very quickly. And that's the masculine power in us, right? That's mm -hmm. not, that's not me receiving feminine flow. That's mm -hmm. me being able to wake up and be the man for a moment, you know, like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Cause, mm -hmm. um, so, so, so really, you know, look for something that's really kind of become a necessity for you. What's not working. What's the cost now? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, of being in that loop of, of mm. the 21st century normal? Is it costing you? If it's not, then you probably won't change. Mm. Um, mm. If it's too painful, then you need extra support. You need more nutrients. Uh, nutrients meaning more sovereignty, more love. You may need more adrenal supplements. You may need more thyroid. You may need more progesterone because you're just depleted. Uh, a lot of times we don't make changes because we're just so depleted, so overwhelmed that trying to make a decision and change uh, in those states is just unfathomable. Um, and that's why you might need to have an IV, right? Well, really yeah. high dose adrenal support yeah. And, yeah. And, and, uh, and be around communities like Earth is, um, be around women like us so that, you know, we kind of ignite each other. We stimulate each other. Okay. Yes, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, yeah. and you know, that's great. That's great that you said that because it's hence the need for 
that most of us need some kind of um, nutritional supplementation, right? Because of the world that's coming at us, of course, of course, you need buffering or help help with that. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know, the vessel is um, is the is the body is the vessel of your soul. So essentially really becoming attuned to when the body isn't well, just like when your mind isn't well, becoming very, very sensitive of the shifts and the needs of your body and your, and your metaphysics too. Mm. At the same time, that's, that's ultimately our job. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that kind of, you know, I cover this in so much detail, Uh, you know, feel free to drop into my Facebook uh, I, I think I do a live every day these days. So do, okay. um, you know, there's just such a body of, you know, work that I'll be creating that all of this is going to be available for anyone that would love to just soak it up because yeah. I think we create each other. You know, I give, my voice gives voice to others, to um, other women as well. So, yeah. Wow. That's just, this has just been such an enlightening call for me to you know obviously obviously myself but like i know that you will have spoken on so many levels to so many of the women in here just really oh. just amazing and you know your your intellectual understanding of you know what we talked about before of you know the fact that you you get, you get it on that physical level as well it's just so it's so affirming i suppose not that we need to be affirming on that level but it's just so amazing to have that wealth of knowledge that you do and to share it in the way that you just did incredible really oh, thank you so much i'm so glad and we did not even touch on the erotic soul what? next time we just we can do, a whole lot of do you know what we will we will we will do this if uh, you know i'll get back in touch with you in a couple of months down the track and we'll do a we'll do a take two of dr denise Renson. <laughs> That's very sweet. You know, I am. Uh, I am. Uh, I'll be uh, launching the the erotic soul book within the next few months. So that's perfect. Okay. We'll, we'll talk when it comes okay. up. Um, I think it's going to really give women a permission to to start creating in a whole other level. It's going to be very beautiful for all of us. It's mm-hmm. healing me powerfully. Yeah. So I can't wait to share it with everyone. Oh, great! Look, thank you so much, Nisa. Oh, thank you. Thanks, girls, for jumping love. on. Thanks for listening, girls. And if you have any questions, just, you know, write them in the, in the feed and I will answer. Absolutely. I'm here for you. Oh, that's fabulous. All right. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah.